going to do another video here on the approaching speculative mania known as the crypto bull market. So one of the things that you're going to hear constantly, it's going to be over and over throughout this next cycle or this period of this next cycle, uh, is going to be people trying to convince you that their scam token is not a scam. And the way that they will do that is by using the term utility. Oh, it's got utility. It's not just buy it and number go up. It's got utility. And so I wanted to just lay out the concept of utility so that in the case that you were potentially about to be scammed, you would know what this word means and how you should approach it. Utility means, of course, usefulness. But the question is always usefulness to do what? And in the context of cryptocurrency networks, of, which of course started with Bitcoin, there is only one metric for utility. And if you want to know what that metric is, the easiest way is just to go to the first page of the white paper. Very, very easy. Go to the top, go to the heading, the title, and it says Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So it's an electronic cash system. The utility is about the usefulness as peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. What does cash mean? This is what gets most people screwed up. Cash means um, instantly settled value transfer, right? Meaning that there's no delay on settlement. What, does, what is settlement? What does that mean? Well, it's basically when the value ceases to become mine and it becomes yours, and you can fully spend it with all of the rights and privileges of being able to spend. Okay, so let's talk about cash instantly settled. Paper money is cash. Why is it cash? It's cash because for better or worse, when I hand it to you, it becomes yours. As soon as I take it out of my pocket and I hand it to you, it becomes yours. Card is not. How do I know card is not? Well, I know card is not because I'm actually a merchant who accepts credit cards. And you can spend with me as a merchant. And then you can either do a chargeback, right? You can call your bank and say, oh, I didn't make that spend. And the bank will actually not allow me to, to have that credit. Or they will take it from me, even if it has quote unquote settled already. Or if something is wrong with the transaction, for instance, within a 24-hour period, you can come back and I can void the transaction. So I had the money and now I say, no, I don't because it's not settled yet. Okay. So instant settlement is cash. Use utility, usefulness as peer to peer cash. What we're looking for is we are looking for that utility. That's actually a great metric for what you should be focusing your attention on. And attention is not necessarily sure. It could be your money because money represents attention. Time is money, right? You, you've you earned money by devoting your attention to something and then someone has paid you for that. That's what labor is, isn't it? But it could also be your time. It could also be your efforts. It could also be your thoughts. And all of those things are important for us to move forward. Instant settlement is incredibly important in the world in which we live because instant settlement allows things like censorship resistance. Because if there's no censor, how do you take the money away? Imagine you can't demonetize somebody from YouTube if you are being paid in peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, as we described the last time. If I am paying the content creator directly when I am watching their video, who can demonetize them? Demonetization is only possible because YouTube has some amount of money and they only settle like every 30 days with content creators. That's how you censor <laughs> because the settlement is not final of the value transfer and the value might be monetary but it might just be informational so that's how twitter censors also okay so this is important to understand that there's a lot to do with freedom when we talk about peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash what is the peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system that is the most useful well it's going to be the one with the least friction so we're always looking for that what is friction well, paper USD is very, very low friction. I love um, Eric Voorhees' 
definition of money. He says, money is the most in-demand good in any market. It is the good that everyone will exchange for every other good or service. That's a really good, really simple definition, right? You never have to ask if you're in the United States of America, oh, do you accept dollars? Do you accept US dollars? No, everything's priced in US dollars. It's the unit of account, right? So this really speaks to utility. Now, it's not just, is it the unit of account, right? Because it could still be something useful, could still be in a useful form, but obviously cash is important. Instant settlement is more useful than not instant settlement. What else makes it useful? The cost to use it, okay? What are the fees on cash? There are no fees on paper dollars, but there's fees on credit card, which is why there's an entire subset of merchants who only accept cash. Now, there's a growing subset that only accept card, but they're very small, and I don't think that they really understand the incentives. The reason why you might want to only accept card was in a situation where maybe you didn't trust your employee who was taking the cash, or you were in a dangerous neighborhood or something like this, right? These, are, But these are outlier cases. They're not, they don't really apply to the general case of utility. So in a case that you're not dealing with a money that is the global reserve currency, or that is the, the, you're dealing with an asset that is not the money in that particular marketplace, obviously cost to use it, ability to acquire it. So we would call this in crypto onboarding and offboarding. So how quickly can I go from this particular thing to what I want to go to? So let's take an example of an Amazon gift card. All right, this is actually a very useful instrument. The reason it's a useful instrument is because you can go in the US to almost any grocery store and exchange your cash for an Amazon gift card. You can go online and there's innumerable sites where you can pay for an Amazon gift card with your credit card. Once someone has an Amazon gift card, it although it's not very easy to change it back into cash, you don't really need to because all the things that you would be buying with the cash are available on Amazon. So I actually know people who will take Amazon gift cards as payment for services or for goods because they know, hey, I'm going to spend X thousand dollars on Amazon anyway in the coming months. So this is perfectly fine. So you, you want to think about which networks, because people have asked, oh, which, which network will this happen on? It's not about which network this bull market will happen on. It's about which network and what concepts should you be devoting your attention to. And the ones that you should be devoting your attention to have very low cost and very low friction to transfer value with instant settlement. That's utility. So if anybody says, oh, it's got utility, it's got utility, you measure it against that, 99.9% .9 of them will not, will not measure up to that, and therefore you can discount them as Basically, you're either the person who is trying to sell you this, doesn't understand what utility is, or they're outright trying to scam you. And in either case, run as fast as you can away. So that's what I wanted to get into. And obviously, for the purposes of Web3, which is going to be Web3, which is going to be the buzzword here, digitally native, which I spoke about before, is going to be very important in terms of utility. And so I will get into that, but I wanted to preface it with this because what I hope to do in this series and what's been coming up to me is that there's a lot of these terms that people get caught up on. And we'll go into number go up as well because that one's just silly. And there are people already in the comments like, oh, just buy Bitcoin, just buy Bitcoin. Uh, you can do that. But I think when we look at the narrative that is behind why you should just buy Bitcoin, uh, you see it crumbles apart and it's, it's, it's inconsistent with, it has an internal inconsistency in terms of that narrative. So we'll explore that. These are the things that I, I am inspired to talk about to try to help you through. If you wanna see the long, more long form of this, people have been like, oh, he's just shilling his newsletter. Look, seven years, every single month, I've been writing about these topics in a longer form. You can have access to all of that or not, or not. 
But for those of you who would like to have access to that, if you find a 10 minute video worthwhile, maybe you would find like 80 articles on this that the people around you don't have because these are not made public, it's a private newsletter. Not to mention just my articles, but the other articles and the advice from our editors about what we should be talking about, okay? People find this thing very valuable. We also, and it also comes with a membership in a private Telegram group as well to talk about these topics. If not, not, don't do it, okay? It's not, this, that, that last part is not for you. Turn off the video, <laughs> okay? So next time, countermarkets.com if you would like to go. There you go, countermarkets.com. There's the shill, okay? Next time, uh, we'll talk either about the digitally native concept or we'll talk about number go up, whichever one I'm, I'm feeling at the time. All right, talk to you next time.